been diagnosed with a C5-C6 disc bulge. What does that really mean? In understanding conditions of the spine, the first thing we have to understand is that there's different spinal sections or different areas of the spine that problems can occur. And we, when we understand that the cervical spine is in the neck, the thoracic spine is in the mid-back, and the lumbar spine is in the low back. So when we look at C5, C6, and what area does it affect, we know it affects the area of the neck because C stands for cervical, and five and six account for the vertebra. In the cervical spine, we have seven vertebra from C1 to C7. Some patients could possibly have an extra cervical spine vertebra, but the majority of people have C1 through C7. And in this area, C5 and C6 are considered the apex of the, ver of the vertebra or something called a stress vertebra, which I'll talk about in a second. C5, C6 is like in the middle of the spine towards the base of the cervical spine. C5, C6 are the stress vertebrae, which I already mentioned, meaning they are where the spine normal lordosis tends to bend the other way. So we know when we look from the side, the spine should have a normal curvature. Well, when it goes from this curve to straight to this curve, C5, C6 is in this horizontal or this midline level. So therefore, it's called the stress vertebrae because it's where spines begin to stress the point of the normal curvature. So as the spine tends to shift more forward, it starts to experience more stress. So it supports the weight of the head above. So as the head tends to shift forward, it can cause more stress to this area. C5, C6 bulging is when these, these vertebra also have something that we have discs in between. Discs between every single bone act as spacers and shock absorbers for the spine itself. The normal curvature with the disc can absorb great amounts of compression forces. However, when the spine shifts out of its normal alignment, specifically involved with forward head posture or straight neck or military neck, it tends to put more weight or stress onto the discs. And as a result, this stress causes these discs to start to bulge. And when these discs start to bulge, they can start affecting different areas in the body. When the disc bulges, it normally means that the very center of the disc, which is something called the nucleus of the disc, moves out of its normal position and causes bulging into that area. When it bulges, the most common way it bulges is it bulges backwards in or, or more or more posterior, you would say, from the front of the body to the back of the body. When we bulge a, a disc backwards, that's where the spinal cord and nerves exist. So normally, unfortunately, as your head goes forward, the disc tends to bulge back, and as it bulges back, it starts to compress these nerves, and therefore it leads to compressed nerve problems. It can lead to pain and stiffness in those areas. It can lead pain into the neck, arms, and hands. It can lead to radicular pain into the shoulders and arms. It can lead to tingling, numbness. It can even create muscle weakness and atrophy in those areas if you really affect the nerves that are coming out. And unfortunately, how much bulging or how much compression isn't always directly related to your pain. It's more related to what fibers that are be being affected as the nerves exit. Exit. So meaning you can have a significant disc bulge, feel nothing, but have functional issues occurring because it's not feeling, not affecting pain fibers, or you can have a minimal bulge, but it's affecting only fibers that feel pain. And now you start to feel significant pain into that area, into your neck or arms or legs. I mean, arms or hands, excuse me. So how do you treat a disc bulge and how do you make it better? Well, first thing, normally this disc bulging is almost always a result of alignment. So addressing the alignment of the problem is the way you improve the bulging of the disc, meaning if you can restore normal alignment, wherever that disc is bulging will now unbulge because the spine is now back into the right position and that abnormal alignment won't cause the disc to bulge in the wrong direction. Think of like the disc of the ice cream of a middle of an ice cream sandwich, right? If you have an ice cream sandwich, you have two hard cookies and you have the ice cream in the middle. Well, if I were to shift the cookies like this, the ice cream will bulge out into the side and that's what a disc bulge is. And imagine that happening at C5, C6, right in the middle of your neck. Well, if we got the cookies and we realigned them, now we allow that negative pressure to kind of help suck the discs back into the normal alignment and reduce the bulging effect. So therefore, realigning the spine is by far the most important thing. So therefore, craft, crafting a protocol treatment plan that's structural in, in, 
in focus, meaning not just trying to deal with the symptoms or what you're feeling as a result of the disc bulge, but actually trying to restore normal position so the disc can unbulge and that nucleus of the disc can go back into the central position of the disc where it's meant to be and allow the body to heal and repair itself in this position. Normally, treatments include things like chiropractic care, specific therapy or rehabilitation in the office. There's normally home therapy and home rehab associated with it that's prescribed for each spinal position to provide the best results. Even in cases we use something called corrective cervical bracing for the cervical spine to help restore the normal position of the spine. In addition to doing all this, we have to also look at what's aggravating the problem. Most often, people lose cervical spinal alignment not only in things like scoliosis or something that they've, in, they've developed over their entire life, but it can normally be these days from repetitive processes. Normally, I like to say technology. Long hours of sitting on a computer, long hours looking at a tablet or texting on a phone, something like those where, they're, where, the, spine, where the spine is flexed. This repetitive position can cause that to to set itself into your spinal into your spinal position, especially your neck, and in this forward position, the discs bulge back and they bulge back and they start to affect the nerve tissue. So you have to also start altering what I call activities of daily living that are aggravating the position of the spine. So when we correct it, it doesn't come back. So first thing to think about is that if you're not having a disc bulge, well, what can you do to prevent it? If you're having uh, disc bulging, you want to start looking at what are the things that you're doing on a daily basis that could be causing your neck to flex or move forward, which can be aggravating this disc bulge. And you want to be proactive towards the treatment, meaning the sooner you start to treat the problem, the better. Untreated disc bulges can become disc herniations and can lead to further disc degeneration, which cause a more complicated issue and normally harder to correct. And if we can realign the spine's natural curves, especially in the cervical spine, and bring the head back over the shoulders, normally disc bulges can be totally reduced and eliminated, and their effects can be uh, eliminated as well, and allow you to lead a very functional life, restoring your normal alignment back into place. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.